Welcome to Long Automotive. Today, we're gonna to be looking at my 1966 Volvo 122 station wagon. I've had this car for a lot of years. I've done a lot of work to it. We've driven it all over the country and back. Uh, so today, we're gonna to do a little walk around. I'm gonna point out a couple details that I really like about the car, show you what it's all about, and then we'll see if we can take it for a test drive and see how rowdy this thing can get. I think you'll enjoy it. And there she is. Like I said on the intro, this is a 1966 Volvo 122 station wagon. Um, if you're familiar at all with the 122 Volvos, uh, you may be more familiar with the coupe than you are the station wagon. The station wagon is actually the hardest to find out of the three types that they made. They made a coupe, a four-door, and the wagon like you see here. Um, they made a little bit more four-doors than they did station wagons. And then finally, they actually made more coupes than they did of the other two models that this car came in. Uh, and that's normally not the case for cars that they make multiple styles of, right? Like normally you think the coupe to be the hardest to find, but it's, that's just not the case with these. Now, I don't know if anybody's watching seen this car before, uh, but where it really gets special is what's under the hood. So let's take a look. What you got here is your bone stock, normal, unmodified Volvo 850 engine. So this would come in like uh, anywhere from 93 to 97 850s, or it would have been in a 98, 99, 2000 Volvo S70. Um, distinction here is that in 99 they went to a variable valve, and this car has fixed uh, fixed cams. Now the car does have a header on it. Um, the factory exhaust manifold won't fit because this was in a front wheel drive application normally. Uh, and I made this header myself. It's okay. I kind of want to redo it. There's some uh, some things about it I'm not happy with, but it looks pretty baller. And uh, the throttle setup on it is actually from a GSXR 1000 motorcycle. And they're just split up and cut together uh, to fit. And then, of course, you know, you got to have the big ITG foam air filter. Uh, and inside, it's got velocity stacks as well uh, as you do. You'll notice when we drive this thing later, that really was done for sound alone. Um, this car only makes like 150 horsepower at the tire. Though, honestly, in a car that weighs 2,500 pounds dripping wet, uh, it, it's plenty. 150 is really all you need in this thing, especially with a stock steering box and things like that. Got a Griffin aluminum radiator in here to keep it cool, uh, which it does fantastic. Uh, I mean, this car, this engine, like I said, it's unmodified, so that's more than enough radiator for this thing. And like I said, uh, you know, little details that are cool. This is the original Volvo uh, washer fluid bo bottle. It's just in this little basket here. It's actually not wired up right now. And the motor for this thing, check it. It's in the cap. How cool is that? Other things to note, up front we got the big SEV Marshall rally lights. Uh, I wanted a set of these for a long time and I looked and looked and couldn't find any. Finally I found a couple that were separate that I put together for a set. These are actually put together kind of in tribute to how the Volvo 123 GT fog lights were. So on your driver's side is a fog light and then on your passenger side is an actual spotlight so the 123 GTs you got one of each and that's the way I did this and the big thing with the SUV Marshall lights is they have the little gold cat on them so just interesting little details come around to the back of the car these came with a split tailgate um, <laughs> I guess it's because uh, make it easier for hauling long items or lumber or anything, but if you've ever done anything like this before, all it actually does is suffocate you, and then <laughs> you just breathe carbon monoxide the entire time. Um, these license plates are really cool. They flip up, so you open this, twisting it. Your license plate actually flips down so you can still see it as you're driving. And then coming back up, Rock tailgate 
and they give you a little lock here so you can set position you can lower it you know however you want you can see the interior is kind of sparse in this thing still I just haven't gotten that far yet um, I did do the headliner in it but everything else is a little strictly as necessary I guess you would say now of course I want to do like uh, new seat covers door panels carpet um, a back seat sort of thing I really want uh, and we'll get there we'll get there um, but when I built this car interior was not a priority I was under a big rush so we just haven't gotten that far yet and speaking of backstory so like I said I've had this car since I think tw I think 2012 um, my dad has a really nice coupe I always loved the 122s and I wanted one kind of with the same color so his is white with red interior so is this car this car is originally white with a red interior picked this car up I found it on Turbo Ricks forums for 300 bucks can't pass up on a deal like that right message the guy he had it this car had been sitting on a farm near him for I think he said his entire childhood uh, guy that owned the estate died sold the car he bought it I don't think he paid much of anything for it to give it to me for $300 um, but mostly he really wanted the car to just go to a good home um, which I think I did uh, I cut it up quite a bit more than most people would the guy lived in Texas it was used for a farm as a farm truck for a lot of years and the condition of the body when I got it showed it, it this thing was rough I mean super super rough and that's really why I didn't feel bad cutting it up um, because to do this swap, you know, I mean, you have to take the whole tunnel, pieces of the floor, everything out of it, message the guy, like, hey, man, I've been wanting a 122 for a long time. This one's cool. Wagon, white, red interior. I'm about it. Let's make something happen. He was like, okay. So we worked out a deal. He drove this thing behind a Ford Explorer on a tow dolly from Texas to Alabama, met me in a rest stop. And then I drove from here in North Carolina down to Alabama and picked it up. I did give him a little bit of money for gas because the purchase price on the car was so cheap. There's no way he could have justified delivering this thing to me, apart from just being a decent person and you know, wanting uh, a good future for the car. So we worked it out. I picked it up. It sat under a tobacco barn for, I don't know, five or six years, quite a while. And then... I finally built this shop and had the opportunity to build it. Well, when I did it, I knew from the go the get-go that I didn't want to do um, the standard four-cylinder. So this would have come with a B18 four-cylinder, uh, one eight liter, dual Celex, or sorry, dual SU carburetors, and I don't know how much power they made. I think it's less than 100. It's not that much. Four-speed transmission it's okay I wanted something a little more than that so I decided five cylinder which in hindsight was a lot of work um, but I like it it makes great noises um, it gets good this thing gets like 27 miles a gallon on the highway so you know there's good and bad with everything but I think it turned out okay so get a lot of questions about suspension on this car as well. This car has Airlift 3H ride height control on it. And like I said, it's bag. So it's on bag over struts all the way around, not traditional airbags. I wanted to go over a bag over strut for uh, room and to keep a shock in it in the front without trying to hang it off the control arm. Um, I had mixed success. So the car handles really good. It rides really well. Um, but it doesn't go as low as I want, partially because I couldn't make the bag over strut fit inside of the control arm. Um, and one of the things I actually want to do in the future is fully body drop this car. Um, so it still needs rear floors anyways. We'll cut the rear floors out of it. It's going to take a notch in the rear frame rail. So we'll notch that rear frame rail, notch the cargo floor. And then I'm thinking about a Mustang II front suspension setup for this. Um, 
what that'll do is it'll allow me to set the base rod height with a cross member wherever I want to. And I'll raise the engine up in the car a little bit, raise the front suspension up in the car a little bit, and it will lay rocker as well as having like a decent um, control arm angle at rod height and still keep that handling. All right, now we got the car up on the lift. You can see what I was talking about with the suspension, the engine swap. There's that bag over in the front. And you can see, I mean, it, all right, so the suspension geometry is not awful, but this is all the way up as high as it'll go, and the control arms are level. So that's what I want to fix when we tear back into this thing, body drop it, maybe lay, maybe lay it on the ground, you know. The other side, that five cylinder fits in there pretty good. Originally, the oil filter was in the front of this oil pan. This is a Volvo 960 oil pan, and you have to section it to clearance for the five cylinder. Something fits in there nice. Uh, there's where that oil filter was relocated. Got a pickup for oil temp sensor. Um, and the trans actually is a Mustang T5 trans. I don't think I said that before. A um, little adapter plate going on there. Bottom of that header I made, coming down to two and a half inch exhaust, it's just mild steel all the way back. Let me come around to the back here. Rear bag over strut, triangulated four link rear suspension, and this axle, axle is actually out of a P1800 ES station wagon. It originally came with like a 473 gear or something, something ridiculous. Swapped out to a 410 gear, uh, which is perfect, honestly, for what it is. But it also gave me rear disc brakes, which is really nice. And the front has discs as well, but they're actually off of a Mazda RX-7, so we'll show you those as well. So here's that front disc setup I was telling you guys about. This is off of, I think like a FB, yeah, I think a FB RX-7. Feel free to correct me. I forget this stuff all the time. Uh, with a Volvo 740 disc, it's actually a popular swap for 240s, I believe, 740s, that kind of thing. Um, but it fit well on this car, and it lets me get four-wheel disc all the way around. So the front calipers on these these days are actually getting really hard to find. Um, the same with the discs as well. The disc is made into the hub originally, and this setup allows me to run a separate disc with a caliper that I can get pads for places and replacement calipers. Um, and I don't know that you can get performance calipers either with the standard 122 caliper which you can with these RX-7 ones so it's on um, EBC Green Stuffs now which is really nice I do like to drive the car um, you know take it around some mountains and stuff like that that helps a lot in that case so what do you say we should we should let it down and air it out right I think I think that's what I want to do I think that's what you guys want to see as well Now, I don't mean to short sell the car. I mean, it gets pretty low, right? It's really not bad. Um, but, you know, I want, of course, for it to be on the ground, like rocker panels on the ground. The front's pretty good. Fitment in the back is a little bit better, I think, uh, because the front has quite a bit of camber gain. When you air it out, Whereas the back doesn't have as much. And it's gonna be a ton of work to body drop it. It really will be. Um, I have some of the things done already, like the transmission tunnel's already clearanced, the drive shaft tunnel's already clearanced, but I have to modify the rear floor, which really isn't the big concern. Um, the problem is that right now the engine is sitting on the ground essentially, so is a front cross member. Don't know if I can get in here to where you guys can see that. But see how close that is. 
this isn't really on the bump stop either it's just my lowest setting that I keep programmed in here eventually though we'll get there we'll get that Mustang 2 front suspension in it cut it up and that'll be in a future episode I'm sure uh, I, I've yet to order any of the components for it uh, so it may be a bit but we'll get that stuff in there and then we'll start cutting this thing up again I think that's enough talking though what do you guys say should we take this thing for a drive I think we should TVs on the downshift. Not a ton of power, 150 at the wheel this thing makes, but especially for stock steering, I mean it's more than enough. in here than I'd really like for a car that I've driven uh, thousands of 
of miles already. Um, when I first built the car, I had a chambered muffler in the back, and I'm pretty confident on the cross-country trip, I lost hearing. Um, it's much better than that now, but still, just some of the buzzing in here, I'd like to get rid of that, make it a little better. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for this one. I appreciate you tuning in. Every single one of these cars gets worked on in here. Every single one of these cars gets driven. A lot of these cars get modified. If you want to see more of that, give us a like, give us a subscribe, show us some love. I do appreciate it. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.